everyone I am back and welcome to my art castle and I'm just going to take you on my tour this is my newspaper wreath um, my art dealer um, Ted Frankel at the American Visionary Art Museum he taught me how to make these reefs and I just love them. This is my tree reef. It's made from toilet paper rolls and material and you, and you glue them together and you decorate it. I just love it. It looks beautiful on my door, doesn't it? This is a poinsettia wreath and it's made from paper and a wire hanger. You cut the paper and you uh, duct tape the paper on the wire, then you glue the poinsettias on. My granddaughter made this for me. Of course, I taught her how to make it. I love making angels. This is my bottle angel, and this is my painted piece angel. I love Christmas. So this Christmas poem stays in my hallway, and I got Christmas trees. I just love Christmas. It makes me feel very special because it has Christ in it, and that's what it's about. Merry Christmas. Many years ago, a baby boy brought joy. Everlasting life he placed in sight. Rich and poor knocked at this baby's door. Remarkable baby was born to the Virgin Mary. Your faith in this baby boy will bring you joy. Christ was his name and by miracle he came. Holy is his birthday who led us God's way. Righteousness he preached many reached. In faith, he shared his father's beliefs. Son of God enriches souls and hearts. Tis the season to share Christ with everyone. Miraculous both show love from our father above. All right are the lives touched by this child. Special spirit, I feel because of my faith in Christ. I hope you feel it this season and throughout the new year too. This is the kitchen gallery. I'm gonna talk about my dolls. This is my Santa doll. Let me tell you how I gave birth to my Santa doll. I was in the store and I saw this um, baby outfit. It was a Santa. I said, I'm gonna make me a Santa Claus. I made me the Santa Claus and my husband said, Santa needs his mate just like I need my mate. So I made Mrs. Santa. This is our life size doll, Miss Sid. Let me tell you how I gave birth to Miss Sid. I always wanted to do a life size doll, so we did it. My husband wanted a boy doll, I wanted a girl doll. So we made it, and I went and got this beautiful dress. And I had picked this dress up because I said to myself, whenever I make a life-size doll, I want her to wear this dress. So this is how it's Mr. Sid and not Sid. Mr. Sid. This is the quilt gallery. Do you see all the quilts all around? Let me show you the portraits I did of my husband and me. This is my husband's portrait. I did it for his birthday and I surprised him, y'all. He was really surprised. And this is my portrait. I think it looked like us, you all. And this course is created with what? Makeup. This is my nativity scene. It's made from an egg carton. It made from cardboard, um, wooden beads, and wooden clothes pins. I just love my nativity scene because I'm a child of God and I love religious and spiritual things around me. This sign I just love, money does not determine your worth. And it's made from yarn, cardboard, and cloth. And I enjoy doing it, but I really don't like fooling with a glue gun. So guess what? I made inspirational words with makeup. And what I said was, money do not make you. My quote 
let me tell you how I gave birth to this quilt. My husband said, I'm cold. Didn't your grandmother teach you how to quilt? I thought about it then. I said, yes, she did. Let me tell you how my big mama taught me how to quilt. She said, Gloria, I just want you to watch me quilt. Then you can go outside and play. She did this from the time I was 10 to 17 years old every Sunday. Okay, I watched her for about an hour. She told me what she did. Then I would go out and play. But I never did it. So guess what? When I started making this quilt, everything she told me started coming back to me. And what I especially remember is you, took, you take a piece of material and you fold it three times. She said you fold it three times because that's for the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So God can protect you in that quilt. And guess what I did? I did it long ways. We put it over our shoulders first. Then it came over our heart. Then it came over our knees, our legs, then our feet. Guess what, y'all? I finished that quilt in about six weeks. And you know what I did? I wore a bandage over my finger the whole time because I didn't, I didn't like the way a thimble felt. And my grandmother didn't wear a thimble, and she always wore a bandage on her face. But now we quilt is really warm, you all. This is the middle passage. I named this the middle passage because I want to give honor to my ancestors' struggles. My granddaughter Brianna painted this picture when she was 10 years old. That was nine years ago. And I just loved it. It was up in the school for three months and people was looking at it and I'm like, oh no, I want to buy that picture. So what I did was, uh, she was going on a class trip. I said, I'm gonna pay for your class trip and you give me that picture. And I love the picture and I get so many compliments on it. And guess what? I'm not selling it. Charcoal. She did this with charcoal and I just love this picture. It is in my gallery and that's where it's going to stay. Thank you, Brianna. This is the main gallery. I modeled my studio and my gallery after the Cone Sisters. The Cone Sisters collected art in the early 1900s. And their art was full of color, and that was something different um, back then. And they went to Paris, and they collected from Matisse, and they donated their collection of Matisse work to the Baltimore Museum of Art. And there's a cone collection there, and it has a sample of what their apartment looked like, artwork all over the place. Uh, my artwork is all over the place, but they had money. And I got plenty of art. Okay, so I got something in common with the Cone Sisters. And the next uh, place I modeled my studio and gallery after was the Sideshow. That's the gift shop at the American Visionary Art Museum. Let me show you some of my art. These are rainbow names. This is Francis. My grandmother's name was Francis. And I did black letters out of wallpaper. And then I put them on white paper with stickers, then laminated. These are my paper dolls. I played the paper dolls as a little girl and I couldn't find them, so I made my own. You get a clothes magazine with models in them. You cut the model out with the clothes you like, put it on cardboard. And cut it out again and guess what of course I painted my faces and sometimes I paint my clothes too this is a waste can made from air cartons I teach arts and crafts to senior citizens and to people of all ages but one of my senior citizens made this air carton waste can for me and I just loved it. Of course, I have my Christmas tree in it. This is my angel doll. Um, it's a tree top. It's, it's made from a cup and you just put lace and netting around it and add some gold and some beads to it 
and you put it on your Christmas tree. Now let me show you how I got started illustrating. At first I illustrated in black and white and I did books. Let me show you some of my books. This is my dream and you open the pages and it has words in it and it has my pictures in black and white. This one, listen to birds and all the books has inspirational stories with the, with the illustrations. Of course, I have one about Christmas, my Christmas story. And then I did greeting cards in black and white. You all, I started painting with makeup in 2005 when my mother gave me some makeup. And all the pictures you see around here are painted with makeup. My husband gave me this card rack right here because I started doing art cards and I started doing art cards because of Jump for Joy. Kim came to me and says, Gloria, can I use some of your uh, images for art cards? They look so good. I started doing my own art cards and my husband fold them and, and cut them and look at this beautiful rack. He brought me dope. My art cards look beautiful in this rack and of course I give some of the proceeds of the art cards to Jump for Joy. You are, I love being a folk artist. I love being able to create my own beauty. And I love being able to share that beauty with the world. So I wrote something about folk art that I would like to share with you. Folk art is the unschooled artistic expression of life, joy, and inspiration from the world around us. Each artist has their own style to express. Folk art has been handed down from our ancestors. It has made people happy for centuries. Folk art has made by people with love. Folk art is an expression that can move people profoundly. It can warm the heart. It can say, I love you to the youngest or the oldest. It is truly special. Folk art tells volumes about the care, the work, and the hours spent creating something special to express love for someone. It makes a precious gift. Folk art brings people together and can make them happy. It can bring joy to the soul forever. You must feel its beauty and its power. Folk art becomes family heirlooms. It can inspire someone you love to create too. 